wonderful. So welcome to Design Your Future Career Exploration. My name is Jennifer Garrow, and I'm an academic success advisor here with the Stanford School. Um, and today we're going to be chatting about career exploration, specifically as it relates to our majors in sociology and family and human development. Um, before we dive too far into that, though, I'd love to hear a little bit about y'all. If you feel comfortable using the chat, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let me know what your major is and what you're hoping to get out of today's workshop. I'll go ahead and just provide a, a quick overview of our team here. Um, hopefully these are some names that you recognize. You've been able to meet with us before. But like I said, my name is Jenna um, and I'll be kind of leading today's workshop. You'll see Denise is in here with us today as well if you have any questions. Um, but yeah, this is the team that's here to support you as you kind of figure out career exploration, major exploration, all of that. All right, let's see here. Awesome. Hi, Jeremiah. Great. Okay, so senior research training specialist. Awesome. Happy to have you pursuing your master's. Open minded. That's awesome. That's awesome. You've got a lot available to you. And then Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Family and human development. Perfect. Yeah, great. Super happy that you two were able to join us today. Since we do have a smaller group, it probably will not take the entire time. This is going to be a very um, casual workshop just for us to kind of chat through some different ideas, things that you might not have thought of before. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in. So what is the big idea of this workshop? The goal is after this workshop, you will have taken inventory of your education, your skills, your experiences, and know how to leverage those in your career planning. You'll have identified resources and services available to support you in your career exploration. And then you'll also be able to determine your next steps in becoming career ready. And we're really gonna chat about what does it mean to be career ready? Um, what does that mean to employers? We'll talk about graduate school, minors, things like that. Um, so we've got a lot to cover today. But one of the first conceptions that I always like to discuss with students is just this idea that career is non-linear. We can't talk about career exploration um, if we don't first address some of these misconceptions. So I think a lot of us grow up with this idea of my major equals my career. I am this major, this is the career I'm going to be in. I'm an education major, I'm going to be a teacher. I'm a psychology major, I'm going to be a counselor. I'm, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, but the reality is this is not at all how career operates. This is a little bit more so what it looks like. Um, so typically our career is influenced by, yes, our major, but also our experiences, our values, our interests, what we're passionate about, the identities that we hold. And all of those things really help to put together our career, our job, any personal fulfillment we might have throughout life. So it's certainly a journey. Um, and this is something that's really important to accept and be okay with early on in the process, or you'll end up getting really frustrated with yourself. Um, so just know that career is nonlinear. The second misconception I want to address is that it's not multidimensional. The reality is that it is very multidimensional. Um, so again, the perception is that your, your major might be preparing you for one career, or your degree might be preparing you for one career. The reality is there are so many different things that you can do within, I mean, outside of your major. So for example, you know, I meet with students who are family and human development majors or sociology majors, and they go on to do research, education, therapy, social work, human resources. We even have some that go into business, um, totally different industries. That's where we really need to focus on the skills that we're bringing into opportunities, the skills experiences, education to make us marketable and career ready for opportunities outside of what we might assume. Um, so just know that you have a lot of options available to you. It's not necessarily narrowing you down to one specific career path. So how do we actually become career ready? So there are three things that I really like to highlight here that are going to help you have just a little bit more self-awareness to reflect on some of these things, to know how you can advocate for yourself and leverage these things in your career exploration. So first would be education. So what are you learning and how is it helping you? The second would be your experiences. How are you building career competencies and skills? And we're going to be chatting about this a little bit more in the coming slides as well. 
And then the third one would be values. So what are your work values and what's important to you? Because this is really going to be central in helping you find career options that are going to be a good fit for you. Um, so the first one we're going to chat about is education. Um, so if either of you are up for it, I would love to hear, you know, what is a class that you've taken that you really enjoyed or that you really feel like helped prepare you for the future in some way? It can be in any way that you might think. Sure. Um, so I'm in the Master of Social Work program here at ASU, and I'm also staff at the School of Social Work under CERC. So um, I have kind of a broad day to day, you might say. Um, but a lot of this is very interconnected. And the work that I do is very macro focused, but the job experience that I had leading up to this was very micro, so direct service, direct practice, and then also training. Mm -hmm. And so what I have not had a chance to do was to get a lot of um, more specifically data analytics experience, like doing the research, doing the work, sure, but then actually analyzing it. So mm -hmm. the internship that I'm in right now actually is with CERC as a work variance, where I've now, I've, I'm working on two different projects, one that's giving me qualitative data analytics, and the other one's giving me quantitative data analytics. And so um, I'm kind of feeling that that's, um, it's been very beneficial and a lot of fun and sort of lends itself to, okay, well, maybe, uh, maybe research that windy path is very much my path. This is my second career. So um, this is something that is, it's affirming uh, for my, I think, hopeful choice mm -hmm. of uh, what the future looks like for me. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing. That is a perfect example. Um, perfect example of how internships, coursework, even if this is your second career, previous experiences have really helped you to clarify what you want those next steps to be. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing. That's a wonderful example. Yeah, I think it's really important. You know, I meet with students a lot of times and sometimes the mentality is, oh, I just got to get through this. But I want students to take a step back and think about what do I have to gain from this experience? Even if it's a class that you don't love, what is something that you can try and tangibly take away from that experience, from that internship, um, anything like that? So that's more so the lens that I want you to start thinking about when it comes to career readiness is not just, okay, I got an A in the class or I finished the internship, but more so what did I learn from this that I can take with me moving forward? So the next thing we're gonna chat about here are these career competencies. I know I've mentioned this briefly, um, so we'll, we'll kind of chat about what these are. Basically, NACE, which is the National Association of Colleges and Employers, um, has published these eight career competencies as being the most sought after skills for employers, graduate schools, professional schools, and so forth. Um, so these eight most desirable competencies are career and self-development, critical thinking, teamwork, leadership, equity and inclusion, communication, professionalism, and technology. So career readiness means that you have the experience and skills in each of the career competencies and are capable of navigating the job search and interview process and have the skills and knowledge to be successful in the career of your choosing. Um, so it's not as straightforward as maybe having the technical knowledge. That's important too, depending on what you're going into but really thinking about these more um, ambiguous types of competencies and how they reflect on you personally. Where have you been able to develop leadership experience? Where have you been able to develop teamwork? Or, um, you know, like where Jeremiah shared right now, probably a lot of technology and communication and being able to translate that data and what you're working on. Um, all of this is really important to employers, to graduate schools and being able to articulate how have my classes, my internships, my experiences, all of those things really come together to help me be a strong professional that is career ready and capable to do all of these things. So this really helps to set the foundation when it comes to career exploration of kind of where our mind should be at and what we should be thinking about when we make decisions moving forward. Perfect. Okay. So next we're gonna chat about values. We can't talk about career without talking about our work values. And unfortunately, these are some things that students don't think about 
ever or they don't think about until they've already accepted a position and realize that they like and don't like something. Um, but your values are going to be one, very unique to you, but two, also incredibly important in helping you find a career that's gonna be a good fit for you personally and professionally. So values are things that you really look for in your work that make it feel like it's a good fit. So for some people, this could be achievement having work that yields results. This could be recognition. Are you working in an environment that recognizes when you accomplish something? Um, relationships, are you a people person? Do you like working with other people? Do you like being in a role that allows you to build relationships, develop relationships? Um, support, is it important to you to have a certain type of management style within your office? Autonomy is another one. Um, do you like having a lot of hands-on supervision or do you prefer to be a little bit more autonomous? There are so many. Um, I just pulled some of these from the balanced careers, but there are so many more values that are not even listed here. Um, but these are important things to pay attention to because this could definitely knock out some potential careers based on what your values might be. Um, if you're somebody that really likes the routine of doing the same thing every single day, then you're not going to like a job that has you juggling a lot of different responsibilities and every day is kind of a new adventure, shall we say. Um, so these are things to really kind of pay attention to. Um, so I would love to hear from you again. Um, either you can unmute your mic or you can just throw them in the chat as well. Are there two values that really stick out to you that are important to you um, off of this list or even ones that come to mind that aren't on this list? Um, I would say helping others for sure. and. Mm -hmm. um, probably a combination of autonomy, but also relationships that I think mm -hmm. we now can kind of find out that that's possible. <laughs> we can work mm -hmm. from home, but we could go to the office sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's perfect. Thanks for sharing, Michelle. Yeah, and that's great. And it's good to know that that's kind of the balance that you like to have too. Not so much autonomy that you're never having to work with people, but just enough to where you're still able to build those relationships, but have the freedom to be working from home or to be working on projects independently. That's great. And yeah, and then thanks, Jeremiah. I see you shared in the chat clear expectations and autonomy. That is huge. Yes, because I know sometimes management or the people that you're working for might not set clear expectations. It might be a little ambiguous. They might just kind of throw you into it, let you figure it out kind of thing. So having that balance and knowing kind of where you thrive under supervision too can be really, really helpful. Um, I know some for me, relationships, huge. I love working with people. And so I definitely know that I always need to be in a job where I'm not working by myself all hours of the day because I would not thrive in that type of environment. And so those are the things that it's really important to start thinking about as you start exploring different careers, because that's certainly going to narrow down some of your options as well. I do um, feel like it. I do feel like it's... Yeah it's always evolving too, mm -hmm. you know, throughout your life that some things may be important early in your career. And then as you get involved and you have other experiences, then you realize, oh, wait a minute, maybe this is really more important for me mm -hmm. over here. Or just, just even, you know, being retained in a position. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important that you have these matches, you know, because if you don't, if you don't, you're just going to go somewhere else <laughs> where you can yeah. find those. And, and really, I think it, it is kind of hard to articulate it. You know, what is, like, I've been in positions like, well, yeah, I like it, but I mean, what, why am I just not like really thrilled here? Mm -hmm. And it always comes down to this kind of thing, you know, for, for me, mm -hmm. and it's never about compensation, you know, but it's always about, well, you know, relationships within the workforce or, um, you know, not being able to use my creativity, you know, mm -hmm. it, it just feels a little bit stifling, you know? Yeah, and, and sometimes it's hard, I think, for people to articulate that and recognize it. Yes. No, that's perfect. I'm really glad that you brought that up too, Jennifer, because when you find an environment that supports your values, you're going to want to stay there. You're going to enjoy your work. Everything can look good on paper from a job standpoint, but if those values aren't lining up, something is still going to feel like it's missing. Um, so yeah, that is that is a perfect example, certainly. All right, so we've taken some inventory of our education, of our values. Now we have to start thinking about where can I start? What are some resources and services here at ASU to support me in 
kind of adventuring into career exploration. So there are a few here that we're gonna chat about. There are many more than this, but these are just four that we like to highlight. Um, one of them being LinkedIn. If you are not on LinkedIn, highly recommend that you check out LinkedIn. It's a great um, platform just to be networking professionally, to be learning about new careers, to stay up to date with what's going on in your field of interest. Um, it's kind of like the professional Facebook, as they say, um, but really, really helpful. And if you're not familiar with informational interviewing, that's just a fancy term for asking, you know, typically another professional questions about themselves, about their careers. Um, and so LinkedIn is a really wonderful platform to get connected. So for example, if I am, well, actually, okay, I'm an academic advisor. Say there is a student that wants to become an academic advisor. They could reach out to me and ask me about, you know, how did you become an academic advisor? What experience would you recommend I take advantage of um, to be successful in this field? What is something that you deal with on a day to day that you didn't think you would? So really just inquiring to learn more about a career, um, about somebody's personal journey into a career can be really helpful. Now that's called informational interviewing. And like I said, that can be done. That's a huge way to network through LinkedIn. Um, I always recommend that students do that through Arizona State University's page specifically because we have hundreds of thousands of alumni and it's always great when you're able to connect with another Sun Devil. So that's a great platform to get connected on. Handshake is also another one. Um, you might be familiar with this one, but basically Handshake is a platform that career services here at ASU uses a lot. They host all of their career events. They host all of their appointments. So if you're wanting to schedule a career advising appointment, you can do that through Handshake. Um, but Handshake's a really great platform to get connected with employers. So attending events or just seeing what employers are partnered with ASU um, to find people to connect with, to find opportunities, to find professionals, maybe other students that have similar interests as you. Um, so those are two that are definitely worth checking out. Um, two that I really wanna highlight today though, are the mentor network and what can I do with this major? So the first one we'll take a look at is what can I do with this major? So if you go to Career and Professional Development Services website, which is just career.asu.edu, and then under Career Resources, you do specifically have to go through their website because they have a membership. Um, and so uh, you have to access it through this way. But you'll find it under Career Interests and Planning. What can I do with this major? And then we can view our majors. Now, these are not ASU-specific majors but you can generally find something that is comparable to an ASU major. Um, and I always encourage students, sure, check out the option that's closest to your major, but check out options that maybe are not directly related to your major at all, just to see what exists. Because like I said, your major is preparing you for a variety of careers. Just because you're a sociology major doesn't mean you just need to look into the sociology realm, right? We can look into different areas. Um, but for today's example, we'll go ahead and take a look at, let's see, I think they changed the name of it. Let's see what went. Got a lot going on here. But really any of these, I mean, based on your interest, you could choose any one of them. You could choose psychology, we might take a look at that one. Social work, sociology. Let's go ahead and take a look at sociology since that is one of our majors. Um, but basically, every single major that you could look at is gonna be laid out the same way. It's going to list an area. So this area would be human services. Um, it's gonna give you a little bit of an idea of what it would look like to work within that specific area. It'll tell you a little bit about employers. So who typically hires people to work in human services? And then strategies. So these are more the tips and tricks that they would recommend um, that you kind of take advantage of or start taking action steps towards if you're wanting to go into one of these areas. So there's a lot, I mean, criminal justice, you could even take a look at criminal justice major, um, law, education, government, social science research, seems pretty relevant. <laughs> um, so let's see, business, there's so many different things you can do, but say we take a look at environmental sociology, right? 
This could go into land acquisition, ecotourism, research, recreation planning. Who hires for this? Consulting firms, local planning agencies, tourism agencies. There's a lot that you can do here. Um, and if you scroll to the bottom of this page, you'll see some general information. So talking about transferable skills that would be good for you to utilize um, or that would prepare you well to go into a career here. And then also you can get connected with employment opportunities, related resources, professional associations, and then occupational outlook. Occupational outlook is through the Department of Labor. Um, and so this really allows you to get a more in-depth look at specific careers. So this is a really good resource to take advantage of too. This is one that I always recommend to students who just feel a little stuck. Like they, they know they like their major, but they're not really sure where to start. They're not really sure what they can do with it. So this is a really helpful place to just explore. You might end up finding things that you didn't even know existed. So this one's really helpful. The second one that I will show you is the ASU Mentor Network. So you can access this one through mentorship.asu.edu. This is also available on Career Services website as well. So pretty easy to find. Um, you'll just log in with your ASU login. And this is kind of like ASU's version of LinkedIn. That's kind of how I think of it. Um, you will have your homepage here. And basically what this is, is it's a network of ASU faculty, staff, students, alumni, and potentially, you know, other people who are just fans of ASU. Maybe they didn't even attend ASU, but they want to give back in some way. So people join this platform either looking for mentorship or wanting to serve as a mentor. And you can do both. I mean, you can be updating your profile to be a mentor for someone, but you can also seek mentorship. So this is a really great way um, for you to start networking with other Sun Devils. And another really great way too, for you to maybe get connected with some alumni or people who are working in a field that is similar to you. Um, and we make it really easy to do that. So if you go over here to make a connection, it's gonna show you all of our active users. So who is online right now? Now you can always search by a specific name. Um, you can also search by major. So say we want to look at family and human development. See if we have any one on here that was a family human development major. Um, so yeah, here you'll see that we've got a couple students. We have someone who's a data analyst, someone in human resources, a lecturer, um, so you can really go through and find just about anything that you that you'd want to find. This is a great way to connect with people. Um, you can also, if we clear the major, we can check out industries. So maybe we want to look at counseling. We want to connect with somebody who works in counseling because that's an area that we might be interested in. Um, so we could look through here. And maybe we want to connect with, let's see, Caroline. Let's take a look at Caroline's profile. So she is a licensed clinical social worker. Um, she's an assistant director. Let's see, she got her master's in social work. And then she also got her bachelor's degree in psychology or family studies. So this is pretty similar. What's really cool when you look at their profile too, is you can see their help topics. So they'll be able to opt into certain topics that they think that they can provide mentorship in. So maybe I want to chat with her about graduate school, or I want to chat with her about balancing career and family. They also have the opportunity to share their industry expertise. So certain industries that they feel like they have enough experience to speak to and provide advice in. And then, of course, there's some additional information. So what were you involved in? Do you have any international experience? Things like that because these can also be really common factors with when it comes to connecting with people. So say that Caroline is someone that I wanna connect with. Maybe I want to learn more about her MSW program, right? So I can click to message Caroline. And if I'm not sure exactly how I should provide that introduction, um, we actually have templates that you can kind of play with <laughs> um, and adjust as needed. So maybe I select career exploration, and I can go in here and edit it. Maybe I want to hear about how she got into social work. And so I can start with that. 
And then you also have the opportunity to request a meeting. So from here, you can select a date. I always recommend starting at least two weeks out. And then you can choose, you know, do you want to meet a video call in person, maybe a phone call? And then you can actually select the meeting duration and all of that. And then Caroline will get an email saying, hey, Jen has requested to meet with you on November 30th for 30 minutes via a phone call or whatever it might be. And then she'll also see the email message that I sent her. And so this is such a great platform just for you to start connecting with other professionals, to start gaining information about careers and you know, graduate programs, anything you might be of interest in or might have an interest in um, to start learning more about those things. So definitely recommend checking out that platform. Very, very helpful. Any questions about any of the resources that we've covered before I move on? Okay, perfect. All right, so we're gonna leave this. Wonderful. So like I said, ASU has so many resources. It's a huge university. There's so many tools here to support you, which is kind of knowing where to find them. But these are some, some ones that I would definitely recommend getting started with. Another question that we're frequently asked is, is graduate school for me? You know, I think sometimes students get overwhelmed with the fact that family and human development and sociology don't have clear career pathways, which is really a beautiful thing. But that's where you have to start thinking about, do I want to go to graduate school? Do I want to go into the workforce? So these are some questions that you should start to think about. Um, if you're considering graduate school, you know, think about what type of graduate and professional program do you even want to pursue? First question. Um, also think about how do you envision that that program will help you progress in your professional goals? This could be your personal goals. This could also be your educational goals. And know that every program is different. Um, so a sociology program here at ASU could be very different from a sociology program at another school. They have different missions, different goals, different coursework. And so it's going to be very unique to that program. And so that's where it helps to start asking yourself these questions pretty early on. Um, also think about when would you like to start a graduate program? Depending on the program, start dates can vary. Some programs are only offered starting in the fall. Some kind of have rolling like they might start in spring or you could start in summer or something like that. So good questions to start thinking about. And then also thinking about what are the pros and cons of starting a graduate program right after finishing your undergraduate experience versus applying after obtaining professional experience. This is something that is definitely dependent on the industry, career, profession that you're trying to go into. I know specifically for business, they tend to like you to have some experience in the quote unquote real world before going back and getting your MBA. Um, but there are some other professions like teaching where you can do like a four plus one and get your master's right after your undergraduate degree and that's totally fine. And so I would definitely say do some research on what is the norm within the area that you're looking to go into um, and not even just the norm, but what's encouraged. So think about what would be best for you in that regard. And then also think about, do you need a graduate degree for what you want to do? I talk to students all the time who just think they need to go to graduate school because they think they can't do anything with their undergraduate degree. And that's not true. Depending on what you want to do, you might need graduate school. That's totally valid. But you don't necessarily need a graduate degree. And certainly by the time you go to graduate school, you want to have spent the time reflecting, narrowing in on what is it that I want to do. Graduate school is not the time for exploration. Um, graduate school is really the time for you to hone in on what do I want to accomplish here? What do I want to do with my career moving forward? How is graduate school going to get me there? So just some questions to start asking yourself. And then also thinking about what can I do to prepare now? So this comes up a little bit more frequently um, with our students who maybe are just getting started. But some common tips here would be start building relationships with your faculty members because those not only are going to help you start networking, but also when it comes to letters of recommendation down the road, who are you going to ask? Typically, when you're applying to graduate school, you do need to have an academic recommendation in some capacity. And so start building those relationships with faculty members as early as you can. It's also important that you get involved. Um, so while having a 4.0 GPA or having a really strong GPA is really impressive, 
Um, and typically you need to have a 3.0 in order to be competitive for graduate school. It's also really important that you are a well-rounded individual and that you have experiences outside of academia. Um, so make sure you're getting involved. And we'll also chat about what it might look like for you to get involved too. And then also prepare your timeline. So again, Career Services has some really awesome graduate school resources. Um, one of them being, is graduate or professional school right for me? Um, and you can find these on their website as well, but it kind of walks you through some questions to consider. Okay, I'm ready. Now what do I do? Because finding a graduate program, figuring out if you want to go to graduate school, is it can be very overwhelming. And so this kind of helps break down what it is that you could be thinking about, what you should be considering, things like that. Um, the other one would be the graduate school comparison worksheet. This one is also really helpful as you start compiling different schools. Um, so definitely make sure, just take advantage of the resources that ASU has to offer. If you have a need and you're not really sure if ASU offers something to meet that need, just ask. One of us is bound to know or to be able to connect you to someone who would know as well. So take advantage of those. All right, now, how can you make the most of your degree? So this kind of coincides with getting involved and there are so many ways that you can get involved that are gonna help to make you marketable, whether you're pursuing graduate school or whether you're going into the workforce or whether you're just trying to explore and figure out what it is you wanna do, getting involved is the best way to figure that out because you are very quickly going to figure out, yes, I love this or no, this is not for me. Um, and so every experience you have, whether positive or negative, is going to be a very valuable experience. So you can do this through clubs and organizations, professional organizations, volunteering, of course, community involvement, part-time jobs, full-time jobs. Um, even looking back on previous jobs that I've had, they've led me to where I am now. And so really thinking about the value of previous experiences you've had and how to maybe help to clarify where you're headed in the future. Of course, projects can be really helpful too. Um, internships, study abroad, and then research, especially if you're interested in pursuing a PhD or um, you know, going more into the research route of things, try and get research as an undergraduate student as well, because um, it definitely helps make you competitive for those types of programs. Another option, um, for our undergraduate students here is to consider adding a minor or certificate. Um, this is something, you know, when I'm meeting with students, I always try to bring up early, not to pressure them to make a decision, but just so they know they have options so that it's not, you know, at the last minute they're thinking, oh, now I have to choose a minor. I want you to start thinking about it early on. Um, there are so many benefits to having a minor or adding a certificate. But before you add one, you should start thinking about what is the added value of adding a minor to my program or of adding a certificate to my program? What knowledge is this gonna provide me with a unique background to help me stand out as an applicant? So that's also something you wanna keep in mind. If you just wanna add a minor for fun because it's interesting to you, that's fine. But we could also be much more intentional with that decision to think about what are the skills and education that I really want to take advantage of that'll really make me a unique asset when it comes time to apply for graduate school or to apply for a job. Um, and then also thinking about what supplemental education would support my career goals. So say you are actually, a couple weeks ago, I was meeting with a student who was studying sociology. She said that she wanted to go on to work in social work. She was thinking about pursuing an MSW. And we chatted about adding a Spanish minor because based on the communities she wants to work in, a lot of them are Spanish speaking. And so it would make sense for her to have a Spanish minor. It would make her, I mean, it being bilingual is a huge skill. And so being able to have that added to her degree program makes her so much more marketable, not only as she goes on to apply for graduate school, but as she goes into the workforce too, having that knowledge. So that's just one example. Um, but I would definitely encourage you if you have the room in your schedule to add some sort of certificate or minor, consider it. Talk to your advisor about if you have that room in your schedule. Some common ones that we see would be sociology or family and human development. I should have had that one listed on here. So if you are a sociology major, you can minor in family and human development. And if you're a family and human development major, you can also minor in sociology or in sociology. 
Um, psychology is also a really common minor for our students, as well as social welfare, which is kind of the equivalent of social work from my understanding. Um, but there are so many different minors and certificates available to students. So feel free to check those out on ASU's webpage and try and find ones that work well for you. All right, and then what are my next steps? So I always like to end with kind of an action step. I personally don't like when I sit through a workshop or presentation and then I just leave and I don't really know what to do with that information moving forward. And so I'm going to challenge you all to think about what is one thing that I can do this week or this month that is going to help me kind of work towards my goal. So if that goal is more career clarity, what is something you can do to get you there? It could be scheduling an informational interview. It could be making an appointment with a career advisor to get advice from them of, hey, here's all my interests. Help me sort these out. It could be um, scheduling an appointment with an academic advisor to chat about adding a minor to your program, right? So there's a lot of different things that you can do here. Um, and I'll give you, the, those of you who are here, just a minute or two to maybe think about a goal you might have. And then if you feel comfortable sharing, feel free to share it out loud or share it in the chat. All right, let's see. Yeah, perfect. So Jeremiah shared that he has a mentor, but he thinks he wants to make better use of their time. Yeah, no, and that's great. I think sometimes um, mentorship can be tricky, right? Or what we might need from a mentor can change depending on the season that we're in. So I think that's, I think that's a great next step. Perfect. And one thing I'll share too, just hopefully as this provides a little peace of mind is I shared with you the advising team here. There are five of us that were listed um, and not a one of us went into our undergraduate career thinking that we were going to be academic advisors. As a matter of fact, if you knew our educational backgrounds, you'd be really surprised that we're all academic advisors now. <laughs> so it just further confirms that it's never something that you just arrive at. It's something that you're kind of fostering learning along the way. And again, like Jennifer said earlier in the presentation, this can totally change with seasons of life. Um, you know, whether you are a traditional student and a recent undergrad, or you're somebody with a family, or you're moving on to a second career, all of these things kind of impact what we do moving forward. Um, and all of the experiences that lead us up until those decisions are really important too and really valuable. So don't stress out about it. Just lean on some of these resources, start asking yourself some of these questions. And I know that this is a little bit shorter than what we thought, but we had a small group today. So let's chat about some next steps real quick, um, right as we wrap up here. So you can always schedule an academic advising appointment with us or with career services. And then of course, take advantage of those online resources. I know I've said this a lot, so just make sure to really use all of the resources available to you, both online and personnel. All right, and I will stop sharing now. So before we wrap up for the day, does anybody have any questions that I can help answer? Or we have Jennifer and Denise with us as well. They're also advisors, so they can help too.
I don't think I have any questions. I was just kind of looking for some more clarification. I'm an online student, so I kind of don't, I've just started diving in to get more interaction, I guess, mm -hmm. um, in order to find out where these resources are, what they're used for, and um, try to, I'm, I'm at the point now that I feel comfortable kind of like, okay, what are my next steps? So this was helpful in kind of trying to navigate the website and see what really is out there. Cause I kind of, I know what I use it for and I need it to be used for more. So thank you for that. Yeah, of course. Happy to have you join us. So Jenna, for students who want to use the ASU Mentor Network uh, site that you showed us, do they need to build their handshake profile first to be able to get on there? Great question. No, they're two separate things. So Michelle, I was just kind of saying that because um, it's confusing. <laughs> so, so they would, if they, if she wants, or I or whoever wants to use that mentorship network, they just go through that link. And then what happens when, as you were saying, they have to go through that way. Do they have to build some kind of profile first to get to use it? The mentor network? Right. Yes. Yeah. So you'll just log in with your ASU write and password, and then it'll kind of walk you through the different steps of have your header and your photo, your education, your experiences. So it'll just prompt you through how to create a profile. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Michelle, since you are an online student, um, Jenna has been great at doing this and we're trying to build uh, future programming that we offer. So if there are things, I mean, we can't guarantee that we can build a presentation, but if there is something that would be helpful um, for you as an online student to know or learn as far as preparation. Um, we know that online students can be anywhere from like a brand new college student all the way to, we have 50 and 60 year olds coming back. Um, if you wouldn't mind just emailing one of us at some point and not to put that all on you, you don't have to be representative for all online students. But if you do feel like, hey, I wish I knew this, that would be helpful for us as we plan for um, spring of this next year, as well as next academic year. I think we're going to try to see how we can reach our students best. And we know yeah. that online students have much, much different situations than our, than our campus emerging students. Yeah, this is the first uh, semester that I've been, I'm kind of halfway through now that I felt like I need to start taking advantage of these things. So I've been just making it work, whatever time it is, you know, with my schedule. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I think it's a little overwhelming on the online environment is there's so much out there. There's so many people contacting you all the time that I'm like, I don't think I need help yet. I, I've got your name, like that kind of thing was what mm -hmm. kind of overwhelmed me as to like diving in and talking to all these people mm -hmm. in the beginning, like I'm coming back to school after a very long time out of school. And I was like, I, I don't know what your job title means to, I don't know if I need you yet. Like mm -hmm. I gotcha. So yeah. that's a little bit overwhelming in an online mm -hmm. environment of like, okay, you keep calling me. I know, I, you know, I know who you are. I love, I love the emails. So I've been just more cognizant of reading all these things for these opportunities that have right. come up. So thanks for that. Yeah. And Jeremiah, you too, if you're, um, if you have information for us or any thoughts, because um, I know we are also in the spirit. In the past, we weren't able to record these very well to provide them because we know that students need what they need when they need it. And it might not be today. It might need three months from now, but now we are, or Jenna knows how to do it so that we can have these things for ourselves um, or for students to say, hey, two months from now, I need to know this. How do we, where do we get that information? So um, just as an FYI in our program in the past, we've had um, a couple of career panels on like the difference between social work counseling and marriage and family therapy. Um, that was one event we've had events. Jenna's done this presentation quite a few times. Um, we've kind of looked at one or done one. Jenny, you did a graduate school one, didn't you? The one yes. that was mm -hmm. graduate school. So we're looking at doing kind of a graduate school slash plan B, like what if graduate school doesn't work? Or what if that's always been your plan and then you get to that point and decide, I don't want to do that anymore? Um, so we just any ideas. And, and again, it's not something that we need today or four months from now. But just if you think it would be really helpful if I had more information on X or Y, um, we're always happy to try to work our best. Because if you're having that question, then there's probably 100 other students that are having that question or concern as well.
I did also think it was helpful. Um, I jumped on the panel a few weeks ago that was with alumni and what their jobs are now. Um, and I noticed it really was like a handful of students and all the professors, which I kind of saw it twice. I saw it first through the professor. So I thought that there'd be a lot more students with like the professors saying, hey, look at this. And all she did was forward the email. But I was kind of surprised at the lack of participation because I really thought it was a unique opportunity to kind of see where people are and just what jobs are out there. Um, so it was good. <laughs> When's the next one? <laughs> I'm on the email server, I promise. <laughs> I don't think we have anything planned moving forward. So this is our next okay. thing is to get some more things on the, and we've also talked about um, what's a good time if we offer like this exact same programming, like in the afternoon slash evening, knowing that our East Coast students are now two hours ahead of us, but sometimes three hours ahead. Like, how do you mix that for people like Michelle, you may have kids. I know Jeremiah says he has kids. How do you mix that? So it kind of hits that sweet spot where people can feel like they're, they can do this. So the nice thing about having Zoom is we can offer these whenever and people can be there whenever, instead of having to say, you have to come in. We used to have them in person. They had to come into our building and sit around the table. So, so yeah, any ideas, send them our way and we'll see what we can do. And that's the goal for the recording too. Um, I know when we host events in the future, hopefully we'll be able to record them. So if you're ever able or unable to make an event, but you still want the content, you can always reach out to the person who's coordinating and see if there's gonna be a recording available. Um, I'll actually be sending this recording to a few students who weren't able to make it at this time. So it's a learning curve. <laughs> but yeah, I wanna thank you both or all three of you for being here today. and. For your participation. I hope that you got something out of it. And because it is a small group, I'll go ahead and send a follow up email as well. Um, I should have your emails from the registration. So if you have any other questions come up, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm happy to help or connect you with someone who can. So thank you, Jenna. Of course. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Have a good day. Same to everyone.